Praise be to the holy name. I am going to play you the show we just did on Blog Talk Radio for those that did not get to hear it. Um, blessings. <laughs> Work this thing. Praise the Lord. Praise God. 
God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. So, I have a testimony. Uh, last night when I uh, was had my show on Blog Talk TV, huh? the spirit just fell. I mean, it was just... It just fell, oh, and it was just over, overpowering, you know. Wow. So yeah, awesome. And I pray for the same thing today. Um, let's open up in prayer, Barb. Yes, let's do. Okay. You you want me to, or you want to? You. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father Yahweh, Lord Yeshua Hamashiach and Raha Kadesh, Lord, we come before you to speak your word of truth. Rahakadesh, I pray now that you fill Barb and, up, Barb and I up and please bless us with your words of truth to speak through our mouths. May it be your words that are spoken and may the people that are listening, may their hearts be tuned in to hear your word. May their hearts be opened up to hear your word. May they hear your word and receive it, Lord, and act on it. Because these are the last days, Lord, and people need to wake up and listen to what you're telling them. Because judgment's almost here, Lord God, and that's what you're showing us. So may they hear your word of truth, and may we be speaking for you and through you. In your most holy name, Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen. And amen. So, through all the mess of, uh, like, the other day, when I, we were supposed to be on, I um, have to admit to everybody, my husband went and got him a new pickup, so we had to sign paperwork, and by the time I got back home, it was already lost time to be able to get back on, so here we are with a message. Amen. Yes, we are. We um, we had stopped when we finished um, last week. We, had, we were talking about obedience to God and about prayer and its importance. And the Lord led me to these scriptures and to, to these notes that I've written down. He, he gave me everything to write and say and talk about. So I'm going to start off again with saying, our example is Yeshua Jesus. We should be walking as he walked. In the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, read them. He is our example to follow. He did the will of his Father, our Father, in obedience to him. He is, the, he is the example we as his church are to follow. We talked about prayer and its importance to build up that personal relationship with Yeshua, Jesus, and the Father. The books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John show us how to walk as he did. Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 15 teaches us how to pray. That's the Sermon on the Mount when he talks about the Lord's Prayer. Amen. So then, amen. So then he gave me this. Okay, Matthew twenty-one thirteen. And the notes he gave me to that was, When Yeshua Jesus was riding on a donkey, and the people were putting down their clothing, and palm tree leaves, and branches from other trees, and crying out, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And he came into the city of Jerusalem, and he walked into the temple courts, and drove out the merchants, the sellers, and the customers. Because Matthew 21, 13 says, and he said, this is Yeshua Jesus speaking, It has been written, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it into a den of robbers. So what he's telling us is his house, us, the church, is a house of prayer. So the Lord said, Are you praying? Are the churches praying? Are they opening services with prayer? Are they closing services with prayer? Are they asking for prayer requests? Are they having prayer meetings, time set aside just for prayer? Are the prayers being led, most importantly, by the Raha Kadesh, the Holy Spirit? For Romans 8, 26 and 27 says, Similarly, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we don't know how to pray the way we should, but the Spirit himself pleads on our behalf with groanings too deep for words. And the one who searches hearts, knows exactly what the Spirit is thinking because his pleadings for God's people accord with God's will. So God's Word exactly teaches us how to pray. And he is pleading right now for you to pray because God's judgment is getting ready to come. 
And so the other example is Paul. Everybody knows Paul. Paul wrote most of the books in the New Testament to the churches. In every letter he wrote to the churches, Rome, Corinth, Galatia, Ephesus, Philippi, Colossus, Thessalonia, he wrote that he was praying, praying for everybody, and he asked to be prayed for. He, through the Ruach Kadesh, the Holy Spirit, commanded that we pray. It's a command. In the letter Paul wrote to Timothy in 1 Timothy 2.1, first of all, that I counsel that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all human beings, for all. Are you praying for all? We as the church are being commanded through the Word of God to be praying for all. Everybody. Yes. Yes. We are. Because this is leading up to being in the garden. So in the second letter to Timothy, Paul says in, in chapter 1, verse 3, I give thanks to God, whom, like my forefathers, I worship with a clean conscience, as I regularly remember you in my prayers night and day. Night and day. Are you praying night and day? Are you seeking a personal relationship through prayer and obedience? To the will of the Father, just as Yeshua Jesus prayed to do the will of his Father, he is our example. And the Lord led me to this, and I'm, I'm hoping everyone is really listening and hearing this in their hearts, because the Lord really wants you to know where we're at right now. Matthew 26, 36 through 46. When Yeshua Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, what did he do? He prayed. Luke 22, 44 says, and in great agony, he prayed more intensely, so that his sweat became like drops of blood to the ground. In Matthew 26, 36-46, yes. Yeshua Jesus prayed three times. And a side note to that, everything is in threes because of the Trinity. God the Father, Yeshua Jesus the Son, and the Ruach Kadesh, the Holy Spirit. This is why we pray or say the spoken written word three times. Because there's power in that Trinity in the number three. In 2639, Yeshua said, Not my will, but your will, Father. And so he, the Lord is asking, Are you praying for the Father's will to be done? Or are you praying for your will to be done? Because if you're not praying for the Father's will, He's not going to hear your prayers. Because His will has to be done to accomplish the goal to bring Yeshua Jesus and His kingdom in. And that's where we're at. He wants Amen. everyone to realize that's where we're at right now. We are in that garden. We're in the Garden of Gethsemane right now, everyone, because what happened to Yeshua Jesus when he left that garden? He was tested, tried, and judged on the cross for us. And what yeah. did he do to get there? He prayed. He is showing us the example of how important it is to be praying right now, everybody. Yesterday was the National Day of Prayer. How many people prayed? How many actually took that call and prayed yesterday? Ask yourself, did you take the time to pray yesterday? Yes. Amen. You know, amen. The Lord is really calling us right now. because. And the other thing is that people need to know, are you praying in the name above all names, Yeshua Jesus? For in Ephesians 6.18 it says, As you pray at all times, with all kinds of prayers and requests, in the Spirit, always in the Spirit, vigilantly and persistently for all God's people, for all again, Confirming what the Lord said in 1 Timothy 2.1. Because it says, when two or more witnesses speak my word, it's true. And so he confirms it, even in his own word of two or more witnesses. Because Paul and Yeshua Jesus both said, for all. Okay, in Ephesians 5.18-20. through 20, Don't get drunk with wine because it makes you lose control. Instead, keep on being filled with the Spirit. The Rakadesh, the Holy Spirit. Are you asking to be filled with him? Are you asking for him to lead your prayers, to speak the words that God wants to hear from you? Yes. The reason why amen. Is because, amen. In 19, Ephesians 5.19 says, Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to each other. Sing to the Lord, O my soul, I added that, and make music in your heart to him, always giving thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord, the Lord wants you to know this. Barb and I had discussed this because I have, I have heard preachers say a prayer and never close it in the name of Yeshua Jesus. Yeah. Because are you closing every prayer in His name? Every prayer? 
because prayers without the name of the Son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, are dead. The Lord doesn't even hear them. It's like you're speaking to the air. They never even get up to the Father's ears. Because everything goes through the Son. Everything. Everything. Everything goes through the Son. He's the door. He is, he is. the door. Amen. He's the door. Yes, Barb. He is the door. So then Ephesians six thirteen through 18, the armor of God. Let me get to that. In Ephesians six thirteen. So take up every piece of war equipment that God provides. And this is the armor, just as the Romans put on, to, to give you an, a picture of what you're putting on. Because you're actually putting on Yeshua Jesus when you put this armor on. And I can tell you right now as a prayer warrior, I can feel every piece of that armor going on me when I pray these words. Amen. So that when the, I know it. So, amen. That when the evil day comes, you will be able to resist. And when the battle is won, you will be standing. Therefore, stand, having the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Put on the righteousness for a breastplate. Put on that breastplate of righteousness. Wear, wear on your feet the readiness that comes from the good news of shalom, peace, the gospel. Always carry the shield of trust with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And take the helmet of deliverance, salvation, along with the sword of the Spirit given that is the word of God. As you pray at all times, here it is again, at all times, with all kinds of prayers and requests in the spirit for all of God's people. Amen and amen. amen. The Lord is telling us right now, he's, he's, he's reaching out to every one of us to be praying because we are in the garden, because the time of judgment is, is coming upon us. It's coming upon the church and it's coming upon the people who are here that are going to be left. Um, are you praying? He had me write that down in great big capital letters with exclamation points. Are you praying as Yeshua Jesus was in the garden? Are you praying drops of blood? Are you praying, praying fervently for the Lord and His will to be done? Praise the Lord. For just as Yeshua Jesus gave the example in Matthew 26, 36-46, he prayed for the Father's will and obedience to be done, to get him through the hour of testing, judgment, so that the Father's will could be done. Because that is what we are striving for. Not for our will, but for the Father's will to be done. For everything to be accomplished. Are you praying for the Father's will to be done so that you can stand just as Yeshua Jesus did through the hour of testing, judgment? For 1 Thessalonians 1.10 says, and to wait for his son Yeshua Jesus, whom he raised from the dead, to appear from heaven and rescue us from the impending fury of God's judgment. We are speaking of God's judgment. So, so we've gotten, the Lord has made the point to you to be praying because we're in the garden right now. So just Amen. as the prophets of old, and he is, he's confirming it. And you know how he's confirmed, he's going to confirm it through his word this way. Just as the prophets of old, Isaiah. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Hosea, Amos, Obadiah, Micah, Nahum, Haggai, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Zechariah, Malachi, Daniel, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Jonah gave warnings of the judgment of God to come. Barbara has been called to be a last day prophet. And the Lord wants Barb to speak about when she was seven years old how he came and talked to her. So Barb, we're going to let you tell them Yeshua Jesus coming to you and calling you to be this last day prophet to confirm your calling well um, when I was seven years old is when I first come to know the Lord um, my father had been a backslidden preacher and I just never heard the voice about the voice of God or anything like that till one day a um, a friend of my dad's come in and invited us to come to um, a Methodist church and when I went 
It, no, it was new, but I heard that minister beginning to preach and tell a truth about someone I, I, I didn't know. I'd never heard of this man named Jesus Christ, Yeshua. I'd never heard of any stories about him, but it touched my uh, spirit, and I went and gave my heart to him. God. I gave my heart to the Lord. So a few months later, I was laying in bed, and I, I was looking outside. And that night, it was it was awesome. You know, it was an awesome night. I mean, it was clear, and I could see the stars in the heavens, and they were so close to the earth. And that night. I reached out my hand, thinking, you know, I could almost touch the, the I could almost touch the stars. Amen. Hallelujah. And and as I said that, I, then I said it out loud, Lord, I can I can almost touch the stars. And then I heard a voice say, Barbara, are you awake? And I went, Wow. That's not Daddy's voice, and I was just laying there for a minute, and then all of a sudden, I heard this voice again say, "Barbara, are you awake?" Well, at that time, you know, being a kid, it scared me, so I covered up my head. You know, thinking, oh, wow, you know, what's going on here? And then again, this voice said, Barbara, just like that, are you awake? Well, then I started screaming for my dad, you know. <laughs> Something's going on yeah. here that I don't understand, and I wanted my dad to come in and get me and take me in like, you know, he used two years ago, it had before, and... And um, and put me in bed with him and mom. But instead, he took. He said, "Come on in here." And needless to say, I really didn't want to go in there. But I got up and I had my eyes closed because I knew there was something standing there at the door. Wow! And I was feeling with my hands to keep from bumping into anything and all of a sudden something took a hold of my hand but I didn't open my eyes something open, uh, took a hold of my hand led me through the dining room uh, past the big table that my dad had made around a, a big pot belly stove that was going uh, was very hot and into my mom and dad's bedroom well dad fixed me a pallet on the floor well i wanted to get in bed you know but yeah no he made me lay down there on the floor and as i was laying there on the floor and i had my arms crossed my chest i could see behind me because see i was facing east and behind me i could see this being walked through the wall, come around, and he stood on my left-hand side, and his robe went across my elbow. And the robe was pure white. He had sandals on, and they were gold. I, 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 that impressed me, golden sandals on. Wow. Um, and wow. then as I began to look up, I seen a golden a sash or something, you know, around around yeah. his middle as a belt. And then I looked on up and I seen his face, but I couldn't see his face really, really clear, clear, because um, it was so full of glory. I mean, the power was upon him, and, and, and the glory was there. And so, wow. At first, I was just 
mesmerized about it. And then he began to speak to me, and, and he said, Barbara, I have called you to be my last day prophet. And you are to tell the world about me and who I am. Praise God. Praise you, Lord. Yes. And he said, I knew your name before the foundations of this world was ever laid. I knew your name before you ever was conceived into your mother's womb. I knew you from the beginning, and you were created and born to to tell people about who I truly am. Praise and you. all of a sudden, I never said nothing back to him. I just, all of a sudden, I just felt the peace come over me. And in that peace, I went to sleep. Wow. And I was going, wow, Father, you know, thank you. And in my sleep, I, all night, I just, you know, kind of praised Thanks, him. Yeah. And for wow. days afterwards, I could feel that robe laying across my el left elbow. Wow. And have I always lived up to that? No. Uh, you know, I was a seven-year-old child, <sighs> not fully understanding exactly what was going on and why it was going on. No, but, but you know, it's always the Lord's timing, Barb, and, and now the time has come because we're in the last moment, and the time has come, and he has called you forth, and you are standing. Yes. Yes, yes, because now, yes, because it took all this time for me to realize who, what he was talking about. I mean, you know, I never even knew that uh, he called anybody in the Bible, but then I found out he called Samuel pretty yep. well in the same way he called me at seven years exactly. old. That's where I have the word opened up, so when we finish this, we're going to read through that book about Samuel. Um, and when I, I found that out, I was like, what? Yeah. And then I went over to Jeremiah yeah. later on in life, and Jeremiah said that, that it said the same thing to him as to me, because, you know, confirming he was known. Before. So it was a confirming of the Spirit, that, yes, yes He does yes, do this. Yes, praise you, Lord Yeshua HaMashiach. Praise your most holy name. Yes. So, and you know, the other thing the Lord reminded me of, too, He had to grow you up in His Word. At seven years old, you were just starting off. And it took all these years, because we were talking about this the other day, it took all these years for Him to write His Word on the tablets of our hearts by our obedience and studying His Word and reading His Word. Yes. For you to know His Word to speak it. Well, you know, at seven, I couldn't even hardly read because I had uh, um, dyslexia. <laughs> and so how I learned how to read, I learned how to read by... Um, <clears throat> going over to uh, the Bible and beginning to learn how to read because the teachers was, you know, um, Praise they God. were having a problem of God. teaching me. Well, his word, I just want to throw in a really quick example here. I homeschooled my, my children for the first few years to get them grounded in God's word. And that is exactly what I taught them to read from was from His Word, and it's it's so much, there's so much power in His Word that they that my son learned to read very quickly just by reading the Word of God. Yeah, that's how I had to learn how to read because they yes. did not know how to teach me. They in those Back days then, yeah. when I was going to school, they didn't know much about dyslexia and all of this good stuff, and and. Um, but, <coughs> excuse me, but 
that's how I learned how to read. In fact, even when I went to college one time, um, this lady uh, said, a professor said to me, um, you talk like old English and you write a lot like old English. And she asked me how I learned how to read. And I said, <clears throat> King James Version. Out of the Bible. Yep. And, Amen. Uh, and she said that's I taught them to read from was from his word. And it's, it's so much, there's so much power in his word. I taught them to read from was from 